Welcome back to Luna Basics. In this video, we'll cover Luna's powerful mixing features, as well as how to export clips and finished tracks from Luna. Luna provides a streamlined analog style mixing experience that lets you spend more time mixing and less time messing with complicated controls or digging through menus. Unique features like integrated multi-track tape and summing emulations bring more warmth and depth to your mixes and let you tap into workflows that were previously only possible in the analog domain. I'm going to start by importing some audio so you can see how each of these features work in the context of an actual mix. I'm just going to drag the audio files from the macOS Finder into Luna. However, you can also use the Import option in the File menu, or the shortcut Command-I. Next, I'm going to start organizing the session by color coding similar tracks together to give myself a quick visual reference. I can quickly change the track color of multiple tracks at once by holding down the shift key to select more than one track from the tracks list before clicking the color block to the left of one of the track names. When I select a color from the color menu that appears in the focus browser, that color will be applied to all of the selected tracks. I'll use this method to color code groups of tracks together. For example, all drum tracks will be blue, all guitar tracks will be red, all vocal tracks will be green, and so on. Now that I have my tracks arranged by color, I'm going to want to group some of these tracks together using a bus so I can control their volume, process them, and solo or mute them together from a single bus track. I can do this by creating a bus and routing the output of each track to that bus. To do this quickly, first select the tracks that you want to route and then use the Create Bus option in the mixing menu, or the shortcut Command Shift B. This brings up the Create Bus popover, where I can name the bus and configure its settings. An important part of this popover is the Route from Selected menu, which determines how signal is routed to the bus. If I select Output from this menu, the bus will be configured as a subgroup and the output of all selected tracks will be routed directly to the bus, instead of being routed to the main fader as they are by default. I can also select any of the available sends from this menu to set the bus up as an aux return, which is generally used for send effects like reverb or delay. In this configuration, the bus is fed by the sends on each individual track. We'll get into sends and aux effects in a bit, but for now I'm going to set this bus up in a subgroup configuration by selecting output from the route from selected menu. I can also set the bus to mono or stereo, and select an optional console summing extension. Adding a summing extension to a bus gives that bus all of the sonic qualities of legendary consoles like the Neve 80 series, breathing warmth and harmonic character into your mixes. Since I have the Neve summing extension installed on my system, it's selected by default. However, I can opt not to use a summing extension by selecting None from the summing menu. Note that if a bus is created without a summing extension, you can always add one to the bus at any time using the console insert at the top of every bus channel. For now, I'll leave Neve summing enabled and click the Create button to finish creating my bus. Once created, the new bus shows up to the right of the selected tracks. The Neve summing controls are shown at the top of the channel, and I can change or disable the summing emulation by clicking the console insert. The outputs of the selected tracks are now routed to the bus, which can be seen in the output section at the bottom of each channel strip. Now if I solo this bus, all of the tracks feeding it are also soloed, and adjusting the fader on the bus changes the combined volume of the tracks. A particularly useful feature when working with buses is the spill button, which automatically hides all other tracks so that only the tracks feeding the bus are shown. This makes it quick and easy to focus in on a group of tracks to adjust the submix or apply group-wide changes. Buses can also be fed by track sends for use with aux effects like reverb or delay. As an example, I'm going to set up a reverb on a bus and send signal to it from some of my drum tracks. I'll start by selecting the drum tracks that I want to send to the reverb and clicking on one of the track's send inserts. From here, I can quickly create a new bus by clicking the plus sign in the top left corner of the send assignment menu that appears in the focus browser. Next, I'll load a reverb plugin on the bus that I just created by clicking on one of the plugin inserts typing the name of the plugin to bring it up in the list, and using the arrow keys to select it. Now I'm ready to send some signal to the bus using the track sends, which I can quickly bring into view by clicking on sends in the mixer navigation section. Luna has automatically created a send for the reverb bus on each of the tracks that I had selected, and I can use the send knobs to control how much of each track is sent to the bus. The P button to the right of the knob sets the send to pre-fader or post-fader, and the M button next to it mutes the send. The send level and pan can also be set using a fader by clicking the button to the left to expand the slot. If I want to send another track to this reverb bus, I can do that by clicking on an empty send insert on any track to bring up the send assign menu in the focus browser. This menu shows all available buses and outputs that signal can be routed to via sends. 
Clicking on my reverb bus in this list will set up a new send on the track that I can use to send signal to the bus. Up to eight sends can be assigned to one track, and existing sends can be reassigned by clicking on the send name and selecting a new bus or output in the send assignment menu. Now that I've sent some signal to my reverb bus, I can solo the bus to hear only the effect. Even though the other tracks aren't soloed, their sends are still active, allowing me to check the affected audio by itself and make more accurate mix decisions. While we're here, let's take a look at a few ways that tracks can be soloed in Luna. By default, the solo buttons work in latching mode, meaning that multiple tracks can be soloed at once simply by clicking on each track's solo button. In this mode, you can also click and swipe across the solo buttons to quickly hear adjacent tracks together. This trick works for mute buttons as well. Once a group of tracks are soloed, you can quickly toggle solo off or on for the whole group using the master solo button on the left of the mixer panel or in the control bar. With multiple tracks soloed, clicking on one of these master solo buttons unsolos all of the tracks, while clicking it a second time resolos the same tracks. The mute button in the control bar can be used to toggle mute for groups of tracks in the same way. Luna solo buttons can also be used in exclusive mode, meaning that once a new track is soloed, all previous solos are cleared. Exclusive mode can be enabled from the mixing menu, or by choosing X or from the mix workflow. Now let's take a look at how to use Luna's integrated multi-track tape. Tape machine extensions can be added to any audio or instrument track in Luna using the tape insert in each track's channel strip, and are a great way to shape the tone of your tracks using tape saturation. A common way to use this feature is to apply the same tape machine to all tracks in the session in order to emulate the real-world sound of playing back all tracks from the same tape reel using the same tape machine. To quickly assign a tape machine to all tracks in the session, hold down the Option key and click any tape insert to bring up the tape menu in the Focus Browser. The tape menu is used to assign a tape machine extension to the selected tracks. Oxide is shown by default as it's included free with Luna, and if you own the optional Studer A800 extension, it will show up here as well. Clicking on one of the tape machines applies that extension to the selected tracks. I'm going to select Oxide, and since I held down the Option key while clicking the tape slot, the extension will be applied to all tracks in the session. Once a tape machine has been selected, the machine can be configured by clicking the arrow next to the name of the extension. Oxide is entirely preset driven, so there are no settings for this machine aside from the power switch. However, a number of factory presets are included that can be used to change its sound. User presets created via the Oxide UAD plugin will also appear here and can be used in the same way. Each track has two main tape controls, a power switch that turns the tape extension on or off for that track, and a saturation knob that sets how hard the tape machine is driven. The magic of the saturation knob is that it simultaneously controls the input and output gain of the tape machine, so it can be used to drive the tape machine harder and add additional harmonics without changing the volume of the track. Now that I've set up some buses and configured multi-track tape, the next thing I want to do is load some plugins so I can further shape the sound of my tracks. During the mixing stage, plugins are loaded into the Insert Effects slots. Note that these insert slots are separate from Unison and Record Effects inserts that are used during recording. Each track has eight Insert Effects slots. By default, only one insert is shown, and the other inserts are exposed as needed once you start to load plugins. You can also click the Fix Slots button in the Mixer Navigation section to expose all eight insert slots, and switch between large and small slots using the button next to the slots in the Mixer panel. Plugins are loaded by clicking on an insert and selecting the plugin from the Focus Browser. In addition to UAD plugins, this menu also shows all other audio units plugins installed on the system sorted alphabetically by manufacturer. Note that UAD and other audio units plugins can be mixed and loaded in any order on the track. The easiest way to find a particular plugin is to simply start typing the name of the plugin, and once the plugin is brought into view, you can select it using the arrow keys or the mouse, which instantly loads the plugin onto the track. Now I can click the preset menu to open the list of factory and user presets for the plugin, and if I know what preset I'm looking for, I can type in the name to bring it up. If I decide I want to change this plugin out for another one, I can do so from the top bar of the plugin editor window, where I can also bring up the preset menu, bypass the plugin, and copy or paste the current settings. I can also hover my mouse over the insert that the plugin is loaded in, and use the plus sign to select a different plugin or click the window icon to reopen the plugin window. 
Clicking the three dots or right clicking on the insert brings up a sub menu where I can remove the plugin as well as remove or disable all plugins on the track at once. Individual inserts can also be disabled or enabled by holding down command and clicking on the insert. Plugins can be moved to a different insert or even a different track simply by dragging. Inserts can also be quickly copied to other tracks by holding down the option key and dragging the insert to another track, or by using the copy modifier below the navigation section. Just click the copy button and then click on the insert plugin that you want to copy. The copy button will change to a paste button to indicate that a plugin is currently copied. You can then click on any other insert to paste the plugin to that insert, or drag to rapidly paste to multiple tracks at once. Click the paste button when you're done to finish pasting the plugin. The power and remove modifiers work the same way and allow you to rapidly bypass or remove plugins from tracks either by clicking on individual inserts or dragging across a row. These modifiers also work for other inserts in the mixer, such as instruments, multi-track tape, sends, and outputs. Note that by default, Luna's meters show pre-fader signal levels, meaning that the signal level shown in the track meter is the level at the output of the last insert, and any changes made to the level using the track fader are not reflected in the metering. Pre-fader mode is useful for monitoring the signal level of tracks being recorded in order to avoid clipping. To switch the metering to post-fader, where the meters will reflect changes made via the track fader while mixing, use the metering menu on the options tab of the settings panel. Now let's say I want to automate a parameter of one of the plugins that I loaded, or maybe I just want to automate a mixer parameter like fader level or pan. I can do this by switching to timeline view, finding the track that I want to automate, and clicking on the view menu in the track display. This brings up the list of automatable parameters in the focus browser, including mixer parameters like volume, mute, and pan, as well as plugin parameters for the plugins that I have loaded on the track. From here, I can select a parameter and manually draw in automation in the lane by holding down the control key and dragging, or by double clicking to add breakpoints. Automation can also be recorded in real time by setting the track's automation mode to touch or latch and adjusting an automatable parameter's fader or knob during playback, like the track's volume fader or a knob in a plugin GUI. We'll take a deeper look at working with automation in a future video. Now that we've covered all of Luna's main mixing features, let's take a look at the last stage of the process, exporting audio out of Luna. Audio can be exported from Luna in a number of ways. In most cases, you'll want to export a full mix, but Luna also offers features that make it easy to export individual tracks or clips for use in other projects. Let's first take a look at how to export a full mix. To start, open the Mixdown window from the File Export menu by clicking the Mixdown button in the Mix workflow or by using the shortcut Command Option B. The Mixdown window is home to a number of settings that determine how the mix will be exported from Luna. One of the most important settings is the Sources menu, where you can select one or more sources to be exported. By default, the source is set to the main mix. However, you can also select any of the buses or tracks in the session by clicking on the source display and checking the box next to one or more sources. A separate file will be exported for each selected source. Once you've selected your sources, use the Options section to configure how the sources will be exported. There are options to include MIDI files for tempo map and instrument tracks, bypass all plugin effects in the session, preserve mono tracks by bypassing all panning, and a real-time mixdown option if you're using outboard hardware sensor effects. The Save To section below these options lets you set the location of the exported files, and the Audio File settings below that lets you set the file type, sample rate, and bit depth. Finally, the File Names section at the bottom shows the names of all files that will be exported. If you selected multiple sources, multiple files will be shown here with names corresponding to each source. Once you're finished configuring the export settings, click the Mixdown button to export your files. Note that by default, Luna will export the Mixdown from the playhead position to the end of the last clip in the session. However, you can also make a selection in the timeline before clicking the Mixdown button to only export a particular time range. Luna has a number of other options for exporting individual tracks or clips, for example if you want to send stems to someone else to be remixed, or for exporting audio in MIDI loops. For exporting individual tracks, there's a pre-configured export workflow that can be accessed using the All Tracks as Files option in the File Export menu. This brings up the same mixdown window as before, but now it's configured to export all individual tracks, which can be seen by opening the Sources menu.
For this workflow, the Preserve Mono Tracks option is selected by default so that all panning is ignored to allow new panning to be applied when the tracks are remixed. A separate file will be exported for each track in the session, as shown at the bottom of the window. Individual audio and MIDI clips can also be exported from Luna using the Clips option in the File Export menu, or the shortcut Command-Shift-K. This opens the Clips Export window, which is the much simpler version of the Mixdown window. Simply click on any audio or MIDI clip in the timeline to add it to the export list. Any number of audio and MIDI clips can be selected and exported together. If any audio clips are selected, the audio file settings will be shown and can be used to set the file type, sample rate, and bit depth of the exported files. Note that clips exported using the Export Clips option only contain the raw audio or MIDI information in the clip and do not contain any plugin effects or automation. That covers the basics of mixing and exporting using the Lunar Recording System. If you haven't already, please be sure to check out the other videos in this series where we cover different aspects of making music with Luna, including everything from downloading and installing the application, to recording and editing audio and MIDI. Stay tuned for additional videos that take a more in-depth look at some of the concepts and features that we've covered in this series, as well as deep dives into advanced features and workflows that we haven't covered yet. Subscribe to the Universal Audio YouTube page to get notified about these videos and more as soon as they're released. In the meantime, we hope you enjoy making music with Luna.